everyone and welcome back to another tutorial. Uh, in this tutorial, you're going to be learning how you can fix your character teleporting into the air like this. When I press R, I want to vault, but my character goes up into the air and I cannot do that. Uh, the reason why it's because we are, we have different heights that the character can be at. We're going to be fixing uh, the character vaulting on undulated surfaces. Uh, we're also going to be fixing uh, the character be able to uh, mental. When you press the R, the line trace would appear here. So it, it wouldn't detect that we are uh, trying to mental here. So we're going to be fixing that today. And also we're going to be learning how you can mental on uh, undulated surfaces as well. And that's going to be it for the video. So the first thing we're going to do, we're going to fix the vault. So what you can do here, you can go to your calculate wall height function that we created just before. Uh, remember that if you want to follow this tutorial here, you're going to uh, you're going to have to watch the previous tutorial where I did the vault system. So after you did the vault system, you can proceed to do the mental system tutorial, which is this one. So here on wall height, we're going to split the structure pin. We're going to get the character current uh, height, get uh, actor, actor location, like this. We're going to get the character height afterwards. We're going to subtract it. Uh, we're going to place the value of 90 here. We're going to subtract it once more and plug the Z of the wall height here. Now you can search here on the, var the variables for wall height. Uh, drag and drop that. Set the wall height. And you're going to do the same thing as uh, splitting the structure pin in here and connecting that to the Z axis. So uh, our fix is pretty much done. We can compile, save and test it out if it works. Uh, I'm going to vault this wall here. Okay, it didn't work. Let me see why. Maybe unpin this to this and this to there here. Let's see if it's going to work now. Let's play. Okay, that's the, the problem got solved. And uh, it works for this bigger walls as well. On step five, vault setup, uh, I have this wall height, okay, wall height uh, variable set in here. So you're just gonna get, you're going to get the wall height. We're going to split the structure pin and then we're gonna get this variable with the structure pin uh, split. It. <laughs> um, and you're going to get the wall height Z. This is the value that um, we're going to need. Okay. Uh, if the line trace hits and our result is that the wall is less than one meter and 80, then we can use the vault, this animation right here to vault uh, uh, one meter walls. Let me see real quick. So we have if the wall is uh, less than one meter and 80, uh, sorry, one meter and 800 centimeters, I think, I think uh, you can use this montage uh, so we can vault. If the wall is more than uh, one meter and 800, then we're going to go to false. Then the, the branch is going to be executing the false. And uh, we're going to be executing a uh, animation that is for is determined to be using for bigger walls uh, for like uh, for example two meters walls okay so i have this animation for vaulting bigger walls as i have here as the same thing for the step five we use this uh, whole method to vault we're going to use basically the same thing or, but for the mental setup. So we're going to just copy and paste this here. If the wall is thick, that means that the wall, that uh, what we're trying to climb is a block like this one right here, or it can be a rock uh, as you have here, right? Um, so here uh, I have animation for one meter, for mentally one meter wall height of height uh, I can choose to jump walls that has more than one meter and 400 centimeters 
So I'm going to type here 140. So if the wall is less than one meter and 400 centimeters, I'm going to use this vault. No, sorry. I'm going to use a, a mental animation that I'm going to show you right now. So if the wall is less than one meter and 400 centimeters, I'm going to use this animation here for vaulting. Where is it? One meter oh, right here. This is the animation for vaulting one meter wall of height. So as you can see here, I basically created a, a new play montage notify window, as you can do by uh, right click on uh, an empty slot for in the notifies. Uh, you can go down here on uh, notify state. And then you can go here and place play montage window, and then you can place it there. You can adjust where the begin and end points are going to be. Uh, so here I set in mine here, and then as soon as it finishes, I set it here. I'm going to show you the other ones so you don't get confused, so you don't miss anything. So here, on this one is here, until it reaches here. And let's go for the third one. This one is to mental walls that has two meter of height. As you can see, here is the starting point, and this is the finish. This is the end point. I'm going to keep this value of 195, and I'm going to change the vault montage animation. So I'm going to click in here and place it there. Uh, I'm going to unpin this false. But actually, I'm going to go here on montage to play, and then I'm going to promote to a variable. As I already did that, I'm going to just drag and drop the mental montage in here, as you can see, and also drag the mesh so we can uh, execute the animation on that mesh. And we're going to replace this uh, animations here. I'm going to set, I'm going to copy, uh, I'm going to duplicate it two times and connect that to there. The first animation is one meter. The second animation is for vault for mentally one meter and five hundred centimeters, and finally the third animation is for mentally uh, a wall that has two meters of height. As you can see, that the values are uh, very good. Uh, here I'm going to change this for one hundred fifty. It's going to depend uh, on which animation you have. The value put in here, for example, 100, is, the, is going to depend on how much your character jumps in the animation. Uh, in the, the mental is 1 meter, so I'm, I'm going to place here uh, a value of uh, 100 that is going to represent 1 meter. One meter. And here is for the same thing, uh, this is 1 meter and a half, so I'm going to place here uh, 150. And this is 2 meters, so I'm going to place uh, 200 of value here. So the character is going to place his hand perfectly on the top of the wall. So I think that's basically it. Let me check for something else. So we just uh, fixed the character teleporting. Now we're going to test if the mantle works. As you can see, it worked. So I'm going to test it here. Okay, it worked. Uh, now we're going to go for the next step, which is to uh, identify uh, walls that is like floating, like for example, this one right here. When I press R, as you can see, the line trace does not hit. I'm going to show you what I mean by that. Uh, debug, when you click here on draw debug type, it should appear here for you. For We're going to choose the draw debug type for duration, so you can see the line trace appearing in the world. Um, as you can see, when I press the R to identify the wall, it doesn't identify because uh, I placed the uh, forward line trace a little bit uh, too much for, <laughs> uh, too much below of the character, so the character wouldn't know which uh, uh, location the wall is going to be at. Uh, so we're going to be fixing that today. The way we're going to do this is going to be by placing a capsule uh, trace, so it's not going to be a line trace, it's going to be a capsule. Uh, the only difference is because it's a capsule, that's uh, nothing more than that. 
So here it created the comments, try again. Uh, try again means that we're going to choose the capsule component to really check if there is a gap uh, below the wall uh, that it can, the character couldn't catch before only with the forward line trace. So we're going to choose capsule trace for objects. Uh, now that we have here capsule trace for objects, we're going to uh, pin the star and end points uh, and the radius half height. We're going to set it, this all up. So we're going to, uh, so we can start by drag and drop the draw debug type. We're going to draw, we're going to drag and drop that. And also the object types, we're going to drag and drop there. Uh, the radius is going to be as the same as the capsule component. Uh, I have mine here, uh, half height set to 90, so it's going to be 90 here. And for the radius, we're going to choose to, uh, 27. Um, and here, I'm going to connect that to here. So first, we spot uh, to choose a location. Uh, first, we spot the capsule trace for objects. We're going to get the actor location first. And we're going to plug that in there on start. And we're going to add the get actor forward factor first. We're going to multiply it so we can get the distance of uh, where the capsule trace is going to hit. I'm going to set this value as 40. Uh, plug that in there and plug that to the end. Uh, for testing purposes, let's just check this out, how this capsule is doing. Um, I think the end, let me see. Yeah, the capsule is hitting the, the ground. So we can place the capsule, uh, the end capsule a little bit up, upwards, <laughs> upwards. So the way we can do that, we can add a plus here, add. And here uh, we can connect that to end and we're going to add a value of like 40 and then play. So as you can see, the capsule uh, radius is a bit upwards. Uh, we're going to copy this and and paste that in there. We're going to connect this to start and this to there. There you go. Let's test it out again. Perfect. Yeah, I think that's fine. There we go. As you can see, that's uh, what I want. When the character sees a gap, he cannot, uh, he can't detect it. And uh, the capsule trace is going to turn green when he detects that there is a wall in front of us. So that's good. That's what we want. And now we're going to, uh, we're going to break the hit result and we're going to get the impact point. So we're going to promote it to a variable. So we can basically just select everything here and then right click, collapse everything to a node. And here we can call this capsule trace. Double click on that. Here on outputs, we're going to connect this set to there. And also we're going to connect the return value here to there. And that's the code for us to work with. Let's go back to the event graph. We're going to connect this to a branch. So we're going to drag off the return value. We're going to type branch. And uh, I'm going to get a sphere trace. So type here sphere trace uh, by channel for objects. For objects. We're going to basically copy this calculation for forward line trace uh, in here. Uh, true. Uh, we're going to connect the object types in there. The radius is going to be 10. Uh, the first return value is going to be on the start and the second on the end. Write the book type in here. We're going to break hit result. 
and we're going to just basically copy all this wall location wall normal in here and we're going to connect the location to there and the wall normal to there and that's basically going to finish go back to calculate wall height and that's it let's just compile save and test it out you see that there is a gap on the um, under this block here uh, we're gonna press R and the character is going to teleport weirdly let me see why mm, let me see why it's because let's go let's go back to calculation for four length rays um, in here we're going to delete this cat actor location and this subtract value drag and drop the impact point in there and then drag and drop uh, just connect it, just those to the pins and compile save let's go back to see if it works okay you can mental that let's see uh, the block that has a it's basically a floating block that has a gap underneath we're gonna press R and the character is going to perfectly place his hand on the top I can do it even in slow motion So yeah, that's basically it. And let's try climbing this one here. And this one. So that's gonna be it for the tutorial. I hope you enjoyed and I see you in the next one. Bye bye.